you know, Ro Khanna, who is a congressman out of California, uh, represents uh, Northern California, part of Silicon Valley. He uh, went on Fox. I go on Fox. A lot of leftists go on Fox. I don't go on all Fox shows. To be fair, I don't go on Laura Ingram for a reason. I don't think she plays fair, but Ro is unafraid. I, I, I know him personally, and he doesn't care. He'll give everybody an opportunity to mm -hmm. meet him. Well, Laura, I appreciate your raising this. The first thing we should look at is the Overseas Contingency Fund. Mick Mulvaney has said it's a slush fund. It allows the Pentagon to fund overseas bases, to fund foreign interventions without any accountability. And I guess my question is, wouldn't it be smarter to put that money in high-speed internet to make sure we're winning in the technologies of the future and not let China win in those technologies? So I think those are areas that we could uh, form bipartisan consensus. I've expressed concern about uh, Michelle Flournoy. Uh, let's see what she says. But she was for an escalation in Afghanistan. She was for uh, Iraq. She was for Syria. Uh, these policies have cost us trillions of dollars. China hasn't been in a war since 1979. We've been in 40 wars. Uh, if you view China as our biggest strategic competitor in the 21st century, then these policies aren't what's going to allow America to win uh, and compete. Uh, Congressman Khanna, I would love to have you back because I actually think there are a lot of issues where Republicans can work with uh, progressives, conservatives can work with progressives. And this is just one of the, I think, one of the more obvious issues, given where this debate already seems to be going. We need to have more leaders like that who are willing to have these conversations on all platforms in front of all all ears and because you don't know. I mean, yeah. it, it, defund the police just in particular, like how many libertarians are open to that because they want to defund everything? <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually there there are. I mean, there was a, uh, the, the, I forget the first name, but the, uh, the Bundy Ranch situation, like this was like back in 2014. Um, those conservatives, apparently one of those guys came out for Black Lives Matter and for defund the police, even though he's conservative, he's a libertarian, but he's like, guys, why don't we support this? Like we, we are for defunding government the police is part of that. <laughs> like, so it, it, you can actually make that argument for people, for people who are actually honest in their, in their ideology. Um, but yeah, I mean this, when it comes to like these sorts of debates and that kind of thing, it's to me, it's, it's less about the person you're talking to and more about the audience that's watching. Because when it comes to Fox news, you know, Ro Khanna, I guess we'll, we'll bring the tweet up, at, uh, uh, but he, he was right now. We have it. He's getting here. Yeah. He's getting crap about going on Laura Ingram's show. Um, which is just, it, there is nothing wrong with going on a cable news network that is the most popular, most watched cable news network in existence. The idea that Ro Khanna going on is somehow validating Laura Ingram. I got news for you. Laura Ingram's going to exist whether Ro Khanna's on there or not. And there is a massive audience on there. Not saying that, you know, they're all of a sudden going to turn into uh, social Democrats by watching Ro Khanna on, on Fox News. But you plant seeds. You go on a, a show like Laura Ingram's show, you plant some seeds, you make an argument right there. He's, he's talking about uh, cutting the defense budget. So it, it's, it's really about Perfect what the content. Argument. Yeah, it's about what the content of what you're saying is, as opposed to where you are. It's about who you're talking to and what you're actually discussing. And Ro Khanna discussing a policy that we should all support and reaching an audience that normally doesn't get to hear that message, at least not uh, in the way that he would uh, discuss it. So, and yeah. And what's really smart about that is uh, Laura Ingram's audience in particular is very like anti-establishment Trumpian, right? So Donald Trump, this was a big part of his message was was making America anti-imperialist again and 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 pulling troops out and and that I think appeals to her audience, which is a little bit more populist. Um, it's more conservative, socially conservative in other areas, but you know it's a perfect kind of argument where you you know you you, you really start to bring folks in, especially if the Republican Party post Trump, at least the RNC is distant from those types of politics, which I assume they might be again. They yeah. might go back to neocon politics. I mean, they basically were under Trump anyways, uh, for the most yeah. part. So I think it's really smart. I mean, it's, it, it, so let's, let's, let's like, let's, let's break this down a little bit because on one hand you have Democrats, uh, normie Dems, neoliberals, uh, media figures calling out progressives for going on Fox. And instead of being criticized for their message, I mean, he, he basically, gave a strong progressive message, which is crazy to me. It's not like he went on and yeah. agreed with Laura Ingram. Mm -hmm. um, he's being called out. And yet, near Tandon, by the way, used to go on Fox all the time, <laughs> all the time. Uh, you know, the, there are folks who will 
argue for austerity and they don't get called out. But Ro Khanna, yeah. of course, the yeah. she'll go on. She's aligned with their positions when it comes to austerity. Ro Khanna goes on to discuss, uh, you know, a progressive way forward. And he gets attacked. Yet Neera Tandon gets, you know, a strong position in the Abide administration. I mean, the, the, this is what we have to, uh, have to understand. They're going to attack us no matter what. Uh, that's what it comes down to. They're, they're going to use the same arguments or they're going to use an argument against us that they will not use against somebody on their, who they view to be on their own side, simply because it is a way to attack the left and a way to uh, protect or ignore whatever, you know, their side is, is doing or not doing. So there's this other side about it, platforming, right? I, I've criticized Joe Rogan a lot uh, for platforming people that I think their audience grows by going on Joe Rogan. And exactly. you know, they're like, you're for censorship. First off, censorship, go look up the definition. It's when the government <laughs> takes yeah. your platform away. Not when Nomi Key says, hey, maybe you shouldn't have like KKK people on your show, the most yeah. popular show in America, mm -hmm. um, podcast in America. But, you know, I've talked about that extensively. But on the other side, um, you know, it is important for us as on the left, at least to platform each other, because it's how you break through this corporate like algorithmic structure. You have been, you've had your show for a long time. Um, how do you see things shifting right now uh, as, especially as these monopolies are basically revolving into the Biden administration? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, on the issue of, of just, you know, uh, platforming, what you were saying is, is exactly right. When it comes to what Joe Rogan does, um, is he will bring on people that don't have an audience yet and he will give them a platform to espouse their BS. And then they get this massive following, you know, get book deals and, and are able to push out their message to an audience that, uh, that they wouldn't have had otherwise. When it comes to Fox news, this is a, a network that is massive. Um, and they already have this, this built in audience that generally only hears a certain message and by bringing people or by having people on like Ro Khanna, who's able to tap into that, that's, it's it's a different way of uh, or a, a different audience that normally he would not be able to reach out to. And politicians, you know, in general, their their job is to speak to people that don't normally agree with them and to try and get them on board. And um, yeah, when it comes to you know using our platforms, I think it's we have to kind of work all work together and support each other and share each other's work because we are up against basically endless money. I mean, coming from these massive organizations, and you're seeing now them trying to. Um, uh, begin to invest a little more in online. You have Peacock now, uh, MSNBC or NBC launching Peacock. I will say though, but it, the thing with Peacock, it's it's funny to me because they they get criticized for our MSNBC gets criticized for um, essentially just being uh, you know a a an arm of the Democratic Party, just being you know establishment centrist conservative. But then they'll have they'll have Peacock, but they'll put they'll put Mehdi Hassan who is a little more you know, to the left progressive Sam right. Cedar, of course, great show course, on Peacock, <laughs> but they, they, they almost use Peacock in a way to try and, and disregard any criticisms that, that are lobbed at them for not having on people on MSNBC, like, yeah. uh, like Cory Bush or like Jamal Bowman on, on a regular basis. So it's, it's a way to sort of deflect any of those criticisms and say, Hey, no, we, we bring these, these progressive voices on, just check out our app that i mean <laughs> nothing wrong with the app the hall, it, behind the closet yeah, exactly. in the other closet <laughs> under the bed that's our that's the show yeah. we found it it's on nothing against the, the app morning. but obviously <laughs> <laughs> nothing against the app but obviously it's going to have a smaller audience than yeah. than the than their network does but um yeah, this is why we all have to work together. I mean, and it's it's also why it's good that you know you get to be you get to be on Fox News and you're able to push that that uh, this discussion out there because places like CNN and MSNBC will they will simply ignore your uh, voices like yours because their their take on the issues is that the Democratic Party is is the left that's the left to them and then you have Trump on the right and and whoever supports Trump that's the right wing and then you know moderate Republicans that support everything Trump does in terms of policy but are you know maybe a little uh, criticize him uh, rhetorically about some of the things he, he may, he may say um, that that's considered to be the center as well as, you know, centrist or, or, uh, or conservative Democrats are. So they completely ignore the left when it comes to their conversation. So we need to be able to utilize our platform wherever we can and be able to spread our message around and support each other, because that's the only way we're really going to be able to get our message out there. Thanks for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. 
it's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.